Assalamu alaikum. In this tutorial, we shall discuss the anatomy of the scapula as a continuation of the anatomy of the bones of the upper limb. And we have discussed a little bit about the anatomy of the clavicle in the previous tutorial. So now we are moving forward to discuss the basic features and some of the important attachments of the muscles on the posterior that is the dorsal surface and anterior that is the costal surface of the scapula so basically scapula it has two surfaces as you know one is the dorsal surface and the another one is the costal surface or you can say anterior surface or you can say posterior surface the posterior surface is the dorsal and anterior one is the costal costal means it is towards the ribs so it is called costal surface the anterior surface is costal surface and it has three borders here three borders one two and this one three so these three borders and the three angles we have three angles this is the superior angle this is one of the angle and the inferior angle here this is the inferior angle this one and we have the medial angle here so this one so one two three three angles three borders three borders and two surfaces and lastly it has three processes one two and three so it has three processes so we shall discuss uh, in detail later on now its dorsal surface here its dorsal surface is convex and divided into two fossae one two it is divided into two fossae by this uh, spine of the scapula this is the spine of the scapula and it divides the posterior surface into two and the dorsal surface is uh, the dorsal surface is convex because you know that the ribs the position of the ribs in the posterior surface is like this so when your ribs are like this and the scapula is attached uh, scapula is attached like this then automatically scapula should be uh, posteriorly convex and anteriorly concave so that's the reason the posterior surface of the scapula is uh, convex and uh, the superior part divided by the spine of the scapula the superior part this is the superior one that is why it is called the supraspinatus means the superior part uh, of the um, spine so this is the supraspinatus so uh, let me write this is the supraspinatus supra supraspinatus and here this is the infra in, infra spinatus so infra spinatus there are three ridges on the posterior uh, surface or this dorsal surface so i am uh, drawing these lines on purpose because of the three ridges ridges means projection ridges on the posterior dorsal surface one two three and the two fossae are connected this superior uh, supraspinatus one and the infraspinatus one these two fossae are connected by the uh, spinoglinoid knot so from the uh, glenoid uh, passing through the spine so spinoglinoid fossae here there is a spinoglinoid fossae uh, which connects the two fossae the posterior border of the spine the posterior border of the spine is called the crest of the spine so this is the crest crest of the spine of the scapula uh, this coracoid process 
is uh, atavistic type of epiphysis. Atavistic means independent phylogenetically, independent, but it is fused with the scapula, part of the scapula, it has become part of the scapula later on, but uh, primarily it is a atavistic type of epiphysis. Uh, means independent from any other bone but now it is fused with the uh, scapula and it is it has become a part of the scapula uh, this is uh, one of the distinguishing character of this coracoid process this is the glenoid cavity and this glenoid cavity this is the process to articulate with the humerus of the upper limb and below this glenoid cavity, this is the infraglenoid infraglenoid tubercle. Okay. Now, uh, one of the important points here: this is the subscapular knot. This is subscapular knot subscapular knot and the the three borders the medial border or the vertebral border vertebral border means uh, the vertebra are here vertically spread over here so towards the vertebra that is why vertebral it is sometimes called a vertebral border, the medial or vertebral border. It is convex. It is convex. It is uh, and thin. This medial border is very thin as compared to the lateral border. Lateral border here it is uh, thin, uh, thick. It is thick because it is going to provide the glenoid cavity and so it needs to be uh, thick and uh, this lateral border is uh, concave naturally concave and if this medial or vertebral border becomes concave this become concave then such a scapula such type of scapula is known as the scaphoid scapula scaphoid means uh, boat shaped it looks like boat you see so when it is concave and this one concave and then it becomes uh, it looks like the uh, board and so uh, such type of scapula is known as the scaphoid scapula when the more medial border is uh, concave coming to the uh, coastal surface uh, we can clearly see here this is the facet for articulation with clavicle on the acromion process uh, this is the acromion process and the facet on the acromion process acromion process and we see here this is the coracoid process coracoid process here we see glenoid cavity glenoid cavity glenoid cavity and we see the supraglenoid tubercle here so this is the supraglenoid tubercle supraglenoid tubercle but we didn't see the supraglenoid tubercle on the uh, dorsal view on the dorsal surface but here on the uh, anterior or the coastal surface we see the supraglenoid tubercle and uh, here should be the infraglenoid tubercle here this is the area infra means uh, on the inferior part supra on the superior of the glenoid cavity and the glenoid cavity itself is the uh, lateral end uh, I haven't mentioned it on the uh, dorsal surface so here is the uh, lateral angle and it is not clearly marked 
and so I didn't mention so here uh, please mind that the glenoid cavity is also the area of the lateral angle of the scapula and here you see this is the this is the superior angle superior angle and the superior border here this is the superior border and here we see the supra scapular knot supra scapular knot supra scapular knot okay and we have the subscapular fossa so this is the subscapular fossa the whole area on the dorsal surface it was divided into two by the spine of the scapula the spinous process but here it is the whole subscapular uh, fossa and the subscapular fossa is the area of the subscapular muscle subscapularis so this is the area of the subscapularis muscle and uh, uh, lateral border here the thicker one lateral border and uh, this is the medial border and uh, lastly here this is the inferior angle yeah. and that is all about the basic features uh, and uh, we are coming to the attachment of the muscles starting from dorsal surface so here coming to the dorsal surface dorsal aspect we have already talked about the infraspinatus fossa so in the infraspinatus fossa there is the infraspinatus muscle so most of this area taking up to this area it is covered by the infraspinatus muscle so this large area it is covered by the infraspinatus muscle so the teres minor muscle is pierced by the circumflex scapular artery means the circumflex scapular artery passes through this teres minor muscle this area is the teres major muscle so you have the teres major and the latissimus dorsi on the inferior angle the latissimus dorsi passes here latissimus dorsi this is the latissimus dorsi and here the supraspinatus fossa so this is the area of the muscle of the supraspinatus muscle so this is the supraspinatus supraspinatus and uh, and here this area it is posterior but on the uh, facet here you will have the coracobrachialis coracobrachialis its attachment as well as the head of the biceps brachii so head of the biceps brachii so this is the long head of the triceps brachii muscle and uh, we have one important muscles on the spine here here is the insertion of the trapezius muscle as you know so this is the trapezius muscle
trapezius muscle and on the uh, medial border here on the medial border on the superior part here there are two muscles important muscles in this region on the uh, this angle superior angle so right over this region we have the levator scapula levator scapulae the muscle this muscle elevates the scapula and uh, rhombus minor we have in this region rhombus minor rhombus minor and the, finally we have the rhombus major we had uh, the, the teres minor at the same uh, style we have the rhombus minor and there is the teres major and so we are going to have the rhomb, uh, rhomb, rhomboid major so this is not rhombus this is rhomboid and here rhomboid major So rhombot minor and rhombot major around the region. So uh, having a picture in your mind, it helps you a lot and it makes it easier to memorize the structures. So that is the dorsal surface. Here on the costal surface, we have the subscapular fossa here, the subscapular. So the subscapular area it is occupied by the subscapularis muscle. So we have the subscapularis. So I'm sorry, subscapularis. Subscapularis muscle. And here is the insertion of the pectoralis minor this area pectoralis minor this is the coracoid process and the costal view the costal surface and uh, we have the small muscle that is the omohyoid omohyoid muscle here in this region, we have the insertion of the homohyoid just uh, near the uh, suprascapular notch. This is the suprascapular notch, and just above the suprascapular notch, we have the small muscle homohyoid. And on the top of the uh, a chromian process this on the top of the chromian process the deltoid muscle is there and uh, the repetition some of the muscles that we have discussed on the dorsal surface can also be seen here uh, for example the long head of the triceps brachii here repeat some of the muscles which have already discussed on the dorsal surface so it is all about the incision of the muscles and the basic features of the uh, structures and the parts of the scapula.